So you've probably heard of the Atari 2600. You may even have heard of the Atari 5200. But you may or may not have heard of the Atari 7800, which is a fascinating machine, quite powerful for its time. Unfortunately, fate conspired against it, and it never really got the chance that it deserved. It has a particularly weird graphics chip called Maria that's unlike anything else that I've seen, so I wanted to play around with it. So here I'm going to document my efforts to get a development environment up and running. This is not going to be as polished as my usual lecture videos that I make for one of my classes. You will see me figuring stuff out as I'm figuring it out. I recommend using the Atari Dev Studio extension to Visual Studio Code. Just for reference, I'm currently running 1.59.1 on my MacBook M1 Air running Big Sur, but it probably doesn't really much matter. And in this instance, I'm installing version 0.7.1. You should probably install whatever the latest version is, of course. Installing. Ah, and look down here, it now says Atari Dev Studio. Notice this is set up to handle both 2600 and 7800 game development. In our case, we want to do 7800 game development, so let's go to Preferences, Settings. Let's type Atari into the search box, and then we need to scroll down a bit and find the default emulator, and switch that from Stella, which is the 2600 emulator, to A7800. The Atari Dev Studio extension defaults to using DASM, D-A-S-M, however you want to pronounce that, and it installs DASM for you. Okay, so now we need some code to compile, and I found this discussion on Atari Age that included a reference to this 7800sprt.s file. So let's download that. I'm going to download it into my 7800 dev folder. There is a note of caution here, so you should read that if you want to dig into that particular piece of code more. And I'm going to change the extension from .s to .asm, so the Atari Dev Studio extension will recognize it. Yep. And let's open it up in Visual Studio Code. Let's see, here's a whole bunch of stuff. So this is by Daniel Boris. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Assembled with DASM. It needs the processor 6502 directive here for DASM to understand what processor to compile it for. And there's a bunch of stuff. More stuff. So I won't dig into the code here, but let's see if we can get it running. Let's try this button here. Compile source code and run an emulator. Compilers, no such file or directory. Huh. Okay, well, let's check that out. Okay, so let's go take a look at this directory. We have users up through all this stuff. Let's check out Darwin. Paste that in. Let's see. Oh, so it looks like, yeah, it looks like we have the Intel versions of the compiler, but not the ARM64 version. It did not automatically install that. And that's relevant because I'm running on my MacBook Air M1. Okay, I guess I could track down DASM, separately install it, make an ARM build of it or something, or maybe there's an ARM build of it out there already. But Anyway, I don't feel like doing that. Let me see if I can just repoint the assembler link to point to the x64 version, and then we can run the thing in Rosetta. Okay, let's check out the preferences again. We can choose the particular compiler. Let's see, these are arguments. Default compiler. Uh, no, not for the basic. I want for the assembler. Ah. Default compiler for DASM to compile your DASM source code. Okay, let's choose custom. Let's choose custom and where do we actually set what the file is? Ah, don't wish to include the included version of the DASM compiler. Oh, and it wants me to type this in. 
<laughs> okay. So let's see. Oh, <laughs> in case people are wondering, this is a comment I got on one of my YouTube videos where somebody said, I don't even know how I ended up here. I was looking for a Daft Punk song. Okay, so let's see. Here's X64, CD DASM. Oh, actually, DASM itself is the executable, I think. Okay, that's the executable. So let's see. Print working directory. So we'll copy all of this. Oh, this is much more complicated than I would really want to deal with. But let's go ahead and try to make this work. And then I think I need to put DASM. All right. Is it happy with that? All right. So let's go back to our source code and try compiling it again. Ah, okay. Now we're cooking with gas. Well, not really. Uh, permission denied. Oh, did it do something silly like it's not actually executable? I can't imagine that this would be designed to force us to go through and do that. I don't remember having to do that on my older Intel Mac. Okay, well, maybe I do. Let's do change mod. Is it all plus X to allow everybody to execute it? Okay, let's try this now. Ah, verifying compiled files. All right. Let's see what we have here. While parsing warning, unknown option, and it does not like... What is all of this? Shadow mask distortion, cubic distortion. This is all cartridge slot load failed. Oh, this is something about the emulator that it's not happy with. Oh, wait a minute. I think, if I remember right, we can't just have the code. I think the emulator is looking for some header information that tells it the particular aspects of the 7800 that this is running on, because the 7800, at least ideally, would have various hardware add-ons. Now, a good portion of these never actually made it to market. All right, so here's a specification of the header. It has 128 bytes in it. And fortunately, we don't have to sort through all of this because there's a section of DASM style source code here that you can cut and paste into your program. So let me copy that. And let's see, where should I paste it? Let's see. This section of variables here, the seg.udata, that indicates that we're specifying these variables as starting at a certain location in RAM, but it doesn't allocate space in the ROM, the actual compiled code. The actual compiled code is going to start here at this org of 8000 hex. So let me paste that in here. And let's see, to match up, I should actually change this here to, let me put the ROM top here. All right, and then I'll get rid of this line. And then the header goes here. So the new segment of code starts here. Now, do I really need this seg code here now? I don't think it matters. Anyway, let me run this and see what happens. Cursion to deep in code segment growing larger, <laughs> minus one, one, one. Minus 119, then max love file size. Ooh, this is probably something to do with the order that various addresses are resolved in. Let me take out this code line, this seg code line, and see if that helps. Nope, doesn't like that. Okay, let me pause the recording and check this out. Okay, so that took me hours to figure out what's going on. I think there's a bug in whatever this latest version of DASM is or something, because I found some code from last year that's basically this, and it ran last year, but it's not now. So I think what's happening here is that notice that it's defining where header starts in terms of where the ROM top is and then subtracting it. So the ROM top is where the actual ROM starts. That's officially at 8,000 as an absolute value. Wait, I should say 8,000 hex, not 8,000 decimal. And then it's subtracting 128 bytes from that in order to make space for this header. 
But then up here, a little bit later, it's using header to define various things. And I think there's something about it trying to resolve all of this that it gets confused. So what I wound up doing is saying, okay, well, let me take this 8000 and let me substitute that in here for ROM top directly. So I'm just going to paste it in here and run that. And it looks like I might have some success now. Aha, here's a smiley face. I can use the arrow keys to emulate the joystick and move around the smiley face. That's exciting. I should mention that in order to get my cursor back, I had to command IE Cloverleaf tab out of the emulator. And then to be able to run it again, I actually had to close this window and then I could recompile it. All right, so let's see. Let's see if I can hack the sprite. Sprites are stored in a very weird way. What I'll do is I'll just see if I can fill, fill this in. So I'm filling in the smiley face. Doop. All right, so I've hacked the sprite a bit. Let's run that. Let's see if that, ah, here we go. Yep, I filled in the smiley face. Whee! All right. I should also mention that an alternative to pressing the little rocket down here is I could type Cloverleaf Shift P, which will pull up the command palette. And one of the possible commands is to compile source code and run an emulator. Oh, one other quirk, it looks like I was creating new instances of the emulator and wasn't actually quitting those, and I can't seem to quit them from the menu. So I'll force quit these. I'll have to figure out what's going on with that another time. All right, so the last thing I want to do before I close out this video is make a symbolic link from the assembler that was installed with the Atari Dev Studio package that lives in user local bin. Ah, it's gonna want me to do that in super user mode. So let's sudo that, sudo make me a sandwich. And now I should be able to go into my 7800 dev folder. And uh, let's see, let's try running DASM on that file. Too many levels of symbolic links. Did not like that. Hmm. Okay, well, let me give up on that then. How about if I do which DASM? DASM not found. Huh. Can I make this a hard link? So let me take out the symbolic part. Let's do sudo. File exist. Okay, well, let's remove that. Okay, now let's try to make that link. All right, now if I go to my 7800 dev folder again, let's try DASM. Oh, okay, that worked, gave me an output. Okay, so it looked like it did not like using a symbolic link, but a hard link worked. So the reason I wanted to do that is now I can run DASM in various other places. And I know that I'm running the same version that Atari Dev Studio is using instead of running some other version that I downloaded that might be different in a way that I lost track of.